Sure. Um, so we will move to the um, next presenter, uh, who is Melich uh, Demirkan from Right Geosystems. And Melich will speak about geotechnical instrumentation for landslide monitor. Uh, Melich, please take it from here. Thank you, Jen. Um, uh, can you see my presentation? Yeah, we see your presentation and we hear you well. Okay, great. So before we start, though, I think <laughs> you may want to try to reach Suresh, the speaker after me. I don't think he's still able to get into this room. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah, you know. So let me start. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about your technical instrumentation for landslide monitoring. And uh, that's pretty much what we do. We do geotechnical instrumentation for various applications. And landslide monitoring is one of them. Um, and I'm going to uh, talk about the general uh, available, you know, approaches and, and tools and methodologies how we monitor landslides. Monitoring landslides are important in a sense that we really understand the magnitude, the direction, the rate, and the depth uh, to properly understand um, the uh, the conditions and uh, the circumstances, and also to design remediations if necessary. So uh, we are at the point in our industry that, like, we have really rigorous tools to uh, to really delineate uh, engineering par parameters related to landslides, as well as, you know, pretty basic material that, you know, can be used as a start. What I'm going to talk about today heavily on the infield uh, instrumentation, like what kind of uh, sensors we use and, uh, you know, uh, how we install them and how we, you know, treat the data and, 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 and you know, mostly on the data side, not the interpretation side. So this is a, 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 a general picture that you are looking at uh, right now uh, on um, the instrumentation. So if there is any landslide, um, you know, there are associated uh, implications on the, the structures around, like the, 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 the house that uh, Dan just showed, and, uh, you know, we monitor these structures using tilt meters, crack meters, and, and creep meters if necessary. And uh, rain gauge is very important parameter that tells us how much rain and that the particular area gets. And uh, one of the important tools here uh, I'm, I'm showing is uh, what we call the in-place inclinometers. And uh, these are devices that show the inclination of a certain strata and, uh, and you can uh, pinpoint uh, the slip surface or the location of the movement uh, using uh, these tools. And uh, also piezometers which are uh, used to determine the water pressure underground water pressure are very useful to detect uh, the change in the water pressure, which is an indication of a movement. As well as uh, other devices, like uh, when we try to put um, anchors to hold the landslides, the load cells, as well as uh, a, a, an, an instrument called extensometer, which in multiple direction you can um, you can understand the deformation uh, along the axis of the instrument at various anchors uh, placed uh, in the strata. Um, so these are pretty much, you know, essential and basic tools. And one of the useful tools that, you know, is being implemented last 10 years is the total station. Even though it is a surveying tool, uh, we converted it into a robotic uh, device that collects automatic deformation data using uh, optical prisms and, and get a really, you know, high-resolution deformation profile of 
uh, the surface or around the area where the landslides occur. And so these are pretty much where we get the parameter, whatever we are trying to monitor, whether it's deformation, stress, or strain. And then like um, what it makes the monitoring nowadays attractive in a sense that how we treat the data. So in a, you know, still some people does, but historically, um, uh, these data were collected manually. Someone has to go to the field and, uh, you know, climb up to uh, the wherever area and, and, and get the data manually. Nowadays, we use various data logging uh, techniques. Uh, for instance, with a wireless data logger, we can connect the sensors to a data logger and send the send the signal directly to a, a cloud-based uh, server and manage using a database management platform. So you can almost near real time access the data in the field. And, and similarly, nowadays, a very common tool is what we call wireless nodes that in a remote area, so this is mostly for a pipeline a monitoring, and then and, and land size related to pipelines, and we can transmit the data to long distances in a mesh network where we can have some sort of access to internet and transmit the data to the server. That's, you know, where we are at right now in the general schema of things. Um, so again, um, I'm going to focus on in my next slides on specific instruments, give you some details and basics about how they work. But essentially, why monitoring? So consider as an engineer monitoring um, as a, like a, you know, a physician getting a, 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 an echocardio of your heart, you know, like this is not a lab testing. We don't do like, you know, block testing. This is a, data actually from the field and um, and uh, you get actual state of the condition of the system, whatever structure you are dealing with. Of course, you know, uh, the, the, the main deal about this, you can have a, a safety precaution and we set alarms to our sensors so that if certain levels of exceedance happens in the allowable deformations, people are warned so that they can get uh, the necessary safety measures. Uh, there are several methods, uh, techniques that are used uh, for sensor itself. For instance, this is a vibrating wire piezometer, vibrating wire, the type of the instrument, which there is a, wi a vibrating wire in tension that is connected to a diaphragm where it's proportional, the, the, the deformation of this diagram is proportional to the resonance frequency of this uh, pretension wire. And these resonance frequencies are read by an electromagnetic sensor and transmit into the system. And these are very, you know, durable, um, uh, stable signal, uh, which we can uh, process and, and, and rely on. So this is, uh, for instance, an application for groundwater monitoring. These red uh, are our sensors, uh, vibrating our piezometers crowded in place. And we are getting data from the well. And uh, for these multiple uh, measurements points, multiple aquifers through this data logger and transmit the data to the system, to the database. This is what we call a crack meter for displacement and deformation monitoring. So in any structure, we can um, measure sub-millimeter level uh, deformations using these crack gauges so we can understand you know, how the structure behave under a, a landslide circumstances, for instance. This is what we call in place inclinometer. There is a digital inclinometer that uh, it was you you know can be um, uh, used by uh, a technician, but these are placed after installation. These can send 
uh, data without any uh, any necessary uh, uh, you know intrusion or uh, requirement by a technician. And and these sensors are called MEMS, a micro electro mechanical sensors, and they have a gyroscope inside, and they give biaxial uh, tilt of uh, the sections that are connected. They are they, these are installed in a, a grooved casing uh, and and you can determine the uh the pinpoint the the, the location of the movement um and you can see here on this graph where uh, the ground start moving uh from this point forward upward this is an extensometer and uh, these can be multiple points in the ground or single point extensometer, which we de get the deformation along the axis. These anchors, anchor points deformations are read by sensors at the head unit. There are various application types. This is one type that we use. There are also uh, MEMS type uh, extensometer, but it's, this is a useful uh, information uh, that, you know, for instance, you get the settlement of a certain area uh, within various strata. So, uh, I basically talk about some of the main uh, instruments that are used in the landslide monitoring. I want to give you some information about the um, uh, the data logging systems that are available in industry right now. For instance, this uh, data logger, basically it's an electronic unit that um, for vibrating wire, you need to send signal to the sensors to plug in and get the resonance frequency, which is done by this uh, data logger. Or for any digital signal like MEMS, uh, tilt meters or inclinometers, uh, the, the, the signals are read by this instrument, saved, and send uh, to the server at uh, this there's an integrated modem inside is connected to gsm cellular network and it uses um you know uh, simple lithium ion batteries and uh, and 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 very efficient on uh, power usage so you can put this into field and forget for one year and it will send data um you know whatever frequencies that you want and and uh so this is an STI-12 interface. I'm not going to get into too much details. There are various technologies, but basically it gives an address to each sensor and, and reads within the given interval and saves the data and send it up to the server. Very simple, very rugged device to use. Again, um, recently these total stations are becoming more and more are uh, useful in a sense that they send you continuous uh, high resolution deformation data and um, you, you use these optical prisms as targets and uh, this prism uh, robotically measures uh, the deformation of that target um, within the intervals that are desired in any, any significant movements within a really short amount of time can be easily uh, catched through the alarms set into the system. So I've, I've spoken about the sensors, the data logging system, how you process, make the data. And, and the next step would be a database management system. Think about if you have hundreds, sometimes thousands of sensor in one project, you have to, you have to treat the data and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and make the user access to the data. I was planning to show some um, demo on the on the uh, database, but if anyone interested, they can email me, and and I can have uh, send some more information about this. But for the sake of time, I want to uh, skip that stage uh, for now. I want to talk about some data results. This is uh, a, a, an inclinometer data. Basically, we are measuring the vertical uh, inclination of a certain, uh, certain point in the project at multiple uh, time steps. And you can easily see how the sensor catches the deformation and to its extent. 
So, uh, and, and, and with this, uh, uh, ways and means, and these uh, green, yellow, and red lines are certain alarm levels for engineers, given uh, the level of deformation and how the structure behaves. So to give them understanding on how should they be. I don't have what through it. That alarm level will means stop work order, usually for most of the project, depending on the overall deformation level. Malik, you can take uh, two more minutes if you need. We're trying to resolve the problem. Sure. I time. think this is my last slide. And, um, and uh, again, uh, we like to have as a next step, like we like to have some sort of redundancies in our measurements, not relying on a you know, single type of uh, instrument output. Uh, so for this, for instance, this is a good example from one of our projects. So the green line shows the deformation levels uh, at an inclinometer. Uh, and the, the, the red line is the water pressures uh, very nearby. And uh, as you can see for this particular project, and uh, whenever prior to actually we have a, a deformation a movement in the system, in the structure, there's an indication of water pressure increase slightly ahead of time, which indicates, you know, there is some sort of uh, pressure in the system, uh, which due to the movement and causing the water levels elevated. So this is both, you know, corroborates each other to give the engineer confidence that, yeah, I mean, my instrument are working support and, and reliable data. And also, you know, an early warning to the formation that, you know, uh, I have to be careful because my water pressure levels are increasing. So with that, you know, and, and given the limited amount of time, uh, I'd like to conclude my um a presentation and, 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 and since I do instrumentation and monitoring, I talk hours and hours about this. And, um, and, uh, but if you guys have any questions, you know, my email, feel free to shoot me emails. Thank you yeah. very much, Matthew. And can you see the chat windows with the questions that uh, came up? I can take a look at now. Um, so if you can uh, address these questions, and in the meanwhile, I'll try to uh, enable Suwash to start his presentation. Sure. There's a question from Allah. Can you connect any of your sensors to a cell phone? Like you can send warning messages if mass started accelerating. And uh, uh, yes, actually, uh, our sensors are connected to the network and, and our database sends uh, warning messages, emails and SMS text messages to the users that certain levels are exceeded um, uh, in, in the structure if it start moving. So it's, it's an, uh, it can be used as an early warning system, but um, this is not an emergency use. This is mostly for engineering purposes. Like, and uh, our goal is not to really monitor catastrophes. We really want to understand the engineering behavior. But if something happens, you know, we are capable of catching it. So there's a question about uh, losing in place in kilometer due to the excessive slope movement. It is a possibility if you shear the casing if there's extensive uh, slope movement, and because of the uh, limitation of the casing, if the casing is shared, uh, most likely you will be losing um, the, the inclinometer uh, strain, maybe not all of them, but the, you know, for sure the ones that are under below the, the shared uh, casing. For excessive um, uh, deformation monitoring, uh, there's another system called shape arrays and it can be helpful to monitor if extensive deformation needs to be, you know, uh, uh, observed. And I think I am done. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Melir. Um, I have one more question while we're trying to get um, a Suresh to be able to present his presentation. Um, what about the uncertainty in the data? 
like these sensors I assume uh-huh. are associated with uncertainty. Um, is this uncertainty fixed between sites? Does it change? How do you address it in order to be sure that you are looking at the signal and not at the noise? Mm, that, that's, you know, so our sensors are calibrated and, and, and they, are, uh, they are only used for specific purposes. So the noise um, usually doesn't come from the sensor, but if there are extensive cabling, especially in the digital side, so we eliminate long cabling at the site, which may introduce some noise to the system. Uh, but, you know, uh, in general, uh, the, the sensor has a discrete output that can eliminate the uncertainty. However, for certain structures like bridges and tunnels, um, the structure itself has their own, you know, oscillation and some natural uh, vibration. For that, we do baseline readings. So you have to start monitoring early in the stage so that you can understand what the baseline, the overall uh, you know, natural uh, behavior of the structure and the output from specified sensors before you know, attributing any, any engineering parameters or like extensive uh, interpretations to the sensor outputs. Does that make sense? It does. Thank you, Melich.